show. <laughs> anyway, we had great plans to do some bee stuff today, but that's gone to shit because it started to get a bit dreary. So I thought, oh well, the lads here, we might show you a bit of top working. I've got a couple of, oh, well, I've got this couple of trees up here that they came from the nursery and they only was the peach rootstock rather than the tree itself. So I'm just gonna change it over. And I thought, oh well, maybe you can come along and check it out. the buds are starting to swell up we'll be flowering in another couple of weeks so which will be good another season or away here we go again oh my god no, the years go by don't they so down here in Oz we basically have our winter when you and the Americans are having their summer so um, yeah we're we're here in the what the middle of July end of July so basically the trees flower in August and then away we go feeding and watering and stuffing around until we get a crop which is a bit involved, of course. <laughs> and I'm in the wrong row just to shit the lad off. <laughs> so if you don't know, almond trees are usually put on a different rootstock to an almond rootstock. And this here is a Nemegard rootstock that didn't get budded over. So I've got a peach tree growing in my almond orchard. So that, oh well, it's a miserable day. I might just work it over. So, the main thing is, obviously we're gonna, this is, I'm gonna actually just do three buds and leave one branch to grow, because you don't wanna cut it all down, otherwise when the sap flow is going, the tree itself will have, go into awful shock and go, oh my God, I've lost my limbs. So hopefully it'll send enough sap up into that and we'll leave one so the leaves can breathe. And then next year we'll cut that one off, or even later this year, and we'll cut that out and we'll have the other one's worked up. That's my plan anyway. Well, I managed to bring the snips, so that was one thing, but I forgot to bring a, oh, here's a go, here's a blunt knife. That might work, but we'll find out. If not, we'll have to go back to the shed and the poor lad will get another eye flicked out. So first of all, we just cut off the three branches we want to butt over. We might just get this back a bit so I don't get my eye off. So I'm going to go in about here. I don't think we better leave that in the paddock. <laughs> right. Ow! Oh, timber! Right. We're going to have to put that out of the way, otherwise we won't get past it, will we? <laughs> Shit. I think we'll do that one. We'll leave this one. Right. We'll leave that one. There's the, there's the lungs. So it's a little bit primitive. <laughs> oh, God. Right, so part one of the project. Of course the thing is, the tree is in no use to me in this state, so even if this doesn't particularly work, well, a bit of pain in the ass because it'll lose another year, but we'll give it a crack. <laughs> you just want to make a little spot so you can slip your stick in. So we're just going to break the bark back. Like I said, I should have brought a proper bloody knife. That would have been sensible. That wouldn't be true bush bee man style, would it? Or too tree budding style. <laughs> I don't know. I'm not sure. We were sort of getting a little bit off track here, aren't we? So you just do want to do that on all the branches. So you got yourself a little bit of... Because obviously the sap runs just under the bark. So, well, I guess it's obvious. But anyway, it's reasonably obvious. <laughs> There's probably some bloody expert nurseryman out there going, No! do that you wild bush bee man oh my god <laughs> and one there I reckon we'll put one around there and we'll be somewhere near it ah damn it that's a bit young that one the bark just let go I was getting a bit too ambitious as you do as you do when you're getting overconfident yeah go all right and then it's like when you're doing up the bolts isn't it in your bloody car or whatever and you're mending something and you think I'll just give it that little half a turn more and then crunch off the friggin bolt snaps in half and then you got the bloody bolt stuck in a hole that you thought you were going to fix 
So that's how it's kind of shit, isn't it? Anybody out there that hasn't actually worked in a workshop on their car, I apologise for my digressions. But maybe my old man always says to me, I'm a bit too bloody strong for my own good. Which I wasn't sure whether that was total insult or, or a compliment. Probably both being dead. <laughs> so the next excitement is we'll get our snips and we'll go and see if we can find See if we don't get too bloody wet now we're halfway through this project. Anyway, so you want a reasonably nice fresh bit of bit of sap flowing wood here somewhere and we need one more little one so you just want to check out where your buds are you see the buds are just on that little bit there so that's where the leaves are going to shoot out from see there and there and there hopefully if we don't completely screw this up <laughs> the little leaves will shoot from there and then away we go just trim this bit extra bit off that we don't need that's if we don't all catch pneumonia out here with this rain on us I'll get me trusty blunt knife out. That's really bloody good, isn't it? <laughs> Go on. Righty -o. You just want yourself a bit of tape. This is just some grafting tape, budding tape, either or. Now, of course, the thing is, make sure they put the bloody thing in the right way up for a start. That's a, that's usually a bit of a dilemma if you mess that up. But what you want to do is because you want to be able to get the sap that's in here into here. So you got to get rid of this bark. See if this knife's going to be up to it and for the other side so it can pretend it's part of the tree cut it into a bit of a wedge works much better with a proper sharp knife of course but hell wouldn't be true to the show if we were too bloody organized would it so you've got rid of the hard bark and you've got a possibility for the sap to to touch each other and you just want to slip that in there like that and you do that on them. The fun part is when you do that and it goes twing! <laughs> righty -o. so now the next thing you want to do is seal it all up. Yeah, I mean, I don't know, nature's pretty bloody ingenious, isn't it? It doesn't, it doesn't mind us messing around with it, but as long as we actually play by the rules. Like, it's, nature has its own set of rules, and us humans, we like to bend them, but you try breaking them and you don't get away with nothing. I mean, that's what happens in the beehive. You can play around with them, play, but they have still, you gotta be, ha, gotta be, ha, ha, ha. <laughs> you still gotta do what is actually natural to a degree. Otherwise, nothing will happen. And then we'll all starve to death. So you can't actually put, yeah, on that subject, you can't put, I don't know, like this is a, a compatible tree. You wouldn't be able to graft on a, I don't know, let's say a macadamia onto this rootstock because it's the wrong rootstock, so, which is rather cool. Even though it's a tree, so you couldn't you couldn't graft an almond tree onto a gum rootstock. I had someone ask me the other day how that all works. Just quietly, I'm not sure. All I know is it doesn't. <laughs> oh shit! Trying to keep it tight. Yeah, rough prick. <laughs> This has stopped raining, so we might get the job done before we get drowned. <laughs> of course, now before you all ride in and get excited, this isn't totally professional, but you never know. If they live, we'll come back here and have a look at it. Oh, anyway, this is what's supposed to happen. So I'll show you over here. This tree, come over here. So when they come from the nursery, normally, so this is the actual almond tree that we want. And then this is the peach rootstock down here. So they'll have actually put just a little tiny bud. They actually put, they actually take the little bud off of there and gr and slide it into the peach tree. Which that's a whole nother dilemma. But anyway, I used to do a lot of that too, but hell, thousands of blooming acres of that nonsense. <laughs> but anyway, doesn't matter. So I'm just, yeah. So now I'm a slack prick and I just get the nurseryman to, they just buy them in because it's easy enough. But anyway, that's what we're trying to achieve. And the reason we've put it up there and not right at the ground is because obviously it's an old tree. And I'm hedging my bets, so even if I only get one of them to grow, I'll be laughing. But, and you, like I said earlier in the video, you want to leave that extra branch so as it's got some sap flow and it can actually breathe a bit and you know the sap will be running up through those branches and push out. Of course, you're going to come out here and have a heap of shoots and crap to knock off, but 
couple of years time that tree will have caught up to this one. So there's just a little bit of special wound paint or wound tree wound dressing it's called. <laughs> Staying true to the project I've just stolen this brush off my mum. <laughs> just put a bit of this wound paint on the top here just so if you don't get any borers and crap in there and maybe seal up a bit around the around the bud there. So we'll put a bit of that around there so that'll seal that up keep it nice and airtight. Depending on the tree sometimes if you've got other trees if you're doing this in summertime and you're doing it on a citrus tree you have a little bag that you stick over the top of it as well so you can keep it all nice and moist and lovely but of course at the minute it's raining its tits but it's nice and moist at any rate so anyway that's about as exciting as top working tree gets we'll come back in a couple of months time and see if the blooming thing took or maybe we won't if it didn't take <laughs> <laughs> <laughs>